Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Jack. Back again to bring you Mythic Sisters of the Moon. Uh, this fight, of course, is extremely intensive, and it's really the first real healer check that uh, you're going to be receiving for your team. This fight, you definitely want to be five healing, uh, and really, it's just a fight that is going to be challenging your healers, challenging your reactivity to certain damage, and uh, very much going to be putting a big focus on your spot healing. So... Of course, every single time that you are uh, changing your debuffs, so you're going from dark to light or light to dark, there will be an explosion of damage uh, that will be going off. And the big thing here to focus on is just how you are pacing yourself in uh, the detonations that are going out. So, for example, for us, uh, what we're doing is we're just having, you know, usually one group at a time. Uh, we'll go, so we'll send, you know, these five people will clear, give it a second, let our debuff fall off. And send another five people and so on and so forth and usually what we'll do uh, is we'll also mix in the moonburn debuffs uh, the people who have the moonburn debuffs they need to be able to clear them out usually we'll send them kind of in between two groups so we'll send you know we will send the first five people then we'll send moonburns and then we'll wait for the debuff to fall off then we'll send the next group and stuff like that um, and generally speaking that'll be kind of the flow that you're going off of so make sure you just have one person calling out at all times uh, definitely keep an eye on your melee because the melee loves to kind of dance back and forth and deal tons and tons of damage. And that really will be one of the big sources of damage that you are basically going to be forced to heal through um, without raid cooldowns. Uh, your raid cooldowns are more or less going to be dedicated towards the Eclipse of the Moon. You might be, because you're 5 healing, able to just dedicate one kind of flex raid cooldown to an as-you-need-it position. Uh, but that'll be something that you kind of have to work on as you're starting. So... Uh, usually you should be able to get your first three raid cooldowns kind of allocated for eclipses and then they'll be back cycling uh, and they'll be back available when you need them again. So you can have one, maybe two of the healers uh, in that sort of flex position if, say, melee is popping uh, their debuffs early and stuff like that and being very, very harmful, then you're able to kind of use uh, that raid cooldown uh, a little bit more aggressively um, during any of the clears and stuff like that. So it's always something to kind of keep in mind. You definitely want to be having powerful raid cooldowns, though. For every single Eclipse of the Moon, there's just tons and tons of uh, healing that you have to heal up for the Absorb. But at the same time, you also want to make sure that you are not uh, stressing out your other healers as a whole. So you definitely want to be allowing uh, the raid cooldown to do its job. So, for example, if you are having a Trank going off, you know, you might want to see and kind of play it by ear of how expensive of abilities that you're using during the Eclipse to be able to heal that damage up. Um, you know, if you're spamming, for example, as a Holy Priest, lots and lots of Prayer of Healing, and it's causing your Trank to have more overhealing, then what you're getting into a situation is you're kind of wasting your own mana for higher HPS in the short term, and this is just going to be hurting you near the end of the fight as you're burning through more and more of your mana. So... Definitely try to keep that in mind. The pacing of this fight is extremely important. Uh, and your mana is very, very easy for your mana just to kind of get drained away. Uh, I was playing this before the nerf to Binding Heal. I still think Binding Heal could be a very good choice here. Uh, if you're playing a Holy Priest, uh, you would just have to probably mix in more Prayer of Healing than I did in uh, this kill. Uh, this kill actually mixed in like no Prayer of Healing whatsoever. Um, so I was able to run without a Promises deck, but... With the changes and now that the fact that um, Binding Heal is fixed, you know, I think you still can run it for this fight. I think it is a still pretty favorable fight because there is plenty of damage going out on the raid as a whole. Uh, you just kind of have to be mindful of how often you're using it and if you're getting good effects out of it. You know? But as an example, you know, even here when you have Eclipses going off, I'm not spamming Prayer of Healing. I'm trying to pace myself as best as I can just to make sure that I have the mana... Uh, later on and it really is super super man intensive and it definitely will put a lot of stress on your other healers so definitely keep that in mind uh getting the raid topped off making sure you're tracking uh moon burns and rapid shots and things like that because especially if you're in like the first group like i was for example and you even saw it uh about a minute ago in the video where i get rapid shot on me and i have uh the debuff stacking on me and i have one of the highest stacks in the group as i get rapid shot on me so I'm taking crazy, crazy amounts of damage. So that's always kind of something to kind of keep in mind of saying, if I know that this damage is going to be, you know, ramping up, I need to make sure that, you know, the most vulnerable people are going to be in this group. Whenever the rapid shot goes off, if it's one of those, they might need an iron bark, they might need an external cooldown or something like that, or just very, very intense healing. So definitely keep an eye out for that. 
Uh, one of the biggest struggles I personally had with this fight was the uh, Glaive Storms. Uh, glaive Storms will be a very large Glaive, will come from the Spectral Cat uh, boss. It will fly into the wall, it'll split into three pieces. Those three pieces hit the walls and they split into more pieces. Uh, the best way that I've found to do this is actually kind of hovering a little bit closer to the entrance than anything else. And generally trying to hug more of the walls. Like more often than not, the glaives are going to go directly through the center of the room or many of them will be going through the center of the room. Uh, so what I've found in my experience to be generally the most convenient is watching where that first glaive goes dodging and going into where it uh, landed. So it lands, it goes into three pieces, and then those three pieces start coming out. And I usually try to run into where that first big glaive came from. Uh, that helped me a lot for finding out where I was supposed to be going. And it's a nice way of, if you're able to run basically right at the, th the first three glaives, uh, it makes it so that you're dodging through those and the rest of them are going to have a long travel time before they reach you again. So they're going to go all the way to the other side of the room, then they're going to split up, and then they're going to bounce back, and you have lots of time to kind of see where everything is. Uh, I would highly suggest, and this is something I didn't do myself, and that really screwed me later on, I would highly suggest whenever the Glaive Storms are going out, focus on mastering that mechanic first, uh, and getting it down to a muscle memory of, you know how the Glaives are going to be reacting, and you know you what you need to do in order to properly uh, dodge them, you know. We had many times where glaive storms would even be going straight through uh, the group as we're hitting final phase and we're having to split up the incorporeal shot. So all that stuff kind of going together, it's really, really important to master the one mechanic basically over the course of this fight that's very unpredictable, that you don't really know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. So uh, that was my biggest struggle here. For me, I chose to play Holy uh, over the course of this fight just because I felt like I had a lot more control over, um, I guess, the type of healing that would be required. So, for example, uh, over the course of this fight, there's a lot of sustained healing that's going out over the course of the fight. And sometimes you'll have a couple of the uh, groups that'll be dealing very little to no damage. And then you'll have other groups that are going to be dealing tons and tons of damage. So you can always draw equivalents or you can always draw comparisons of like, oh yeah, usually more often than not, this melee group will deal tons of damage. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it's also a little bit more comfortable, again, me personally, uh, for playing Holy on this because... I don't have to worry about any sort of wasted atonements that are going out at any point in time. Uh, for me, I'm saying, I'm going to play Holy for this fight. If I need to actually cast Prayer of Healing, I can cast Prayer of Healing. If I don't need to, I will stick with my Binding Heal. I will stick with, you know, using Sanctify when I need to and things like that. And I think that for me personally, and because this fight is extremely long, it's over eight minutes, uh, was our, our first kill, you know. The other part of it is that, you know, Disc definitely feels a lot more comfortable with mana these days, but I, personally, I do feel a lot more comfortable with my mana with Holy for a long-term period of time, so that'd be some of my thoughts. For our raid cooldown setup, uh, generally we did, I believe it was our R Revival was first, my Hymn was second, and I believe we had our Trank third, and then we kind of had our Holy Priest who was uh, playing his off-spec. He was a bit more of a flex position where he was using it generally on the melee groups when the melee groups were going to be exploding. Uh, and that worked out pretty well for us because it wasn't like we needed a giant raid cooldown or anything like that, um, but we needed some kind of oomph there to kind of push us forward and make sure that we weren't going to be uh, losing out or losing anybody in the process. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you all found it helpful. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Uh, the link to the logs, of course, is going to be in the description below. All the links, Discord, all my UI links, of course, are going to be in the description as well. So, I hope you guys found this helpful. Hope, hope you think you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all next time.